Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when the sun. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, it's Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down. Welcome to this Sunday morning worship service from the Diocese of Georgia. You will find the bulletin linked here on our Facebook and YouTube page. Let us center ourselves just a moment before we begin worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, my God, when I, in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. 
How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart that I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. How great thou art. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this a time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing out towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John 
and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read together Psalm 68, verses 1 through 10 and 33 through 36. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God and his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebel shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the glory you shook and the skies poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel, you sent a gracious rain, O oh God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places. The God of Israel, giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be to God. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I worry sometimes that the church or followers of Jesus may have done more harm in looking for ready answers and offering them in times of pain and grief than the good we've done with sitting with people in their pain. Because what can happen is that we want to make everything okay when we need to just feel the hurt sometimes. Let me explain. Let's take the case. It's just the really excruciating pain of a a parent whose child has died. Now, sometimes people will say things wanting to make it better, like God needed another angel or God has a plan. But really, in that time of grief so deep, we just need to sit and love them and be with them. The time for exploring it will come later, but for now, it's just a time to, to feel that pain and that loss and let that be real. Now, the thing is that we can go to the ready answers because we don't really, I don't know, like sitting with the fact that we don't have the real answers. There's a way in which maybe we have to unlearn some of what we've learned. Here's what I found for myself. Now, I grew up in Pentecostal churches. From the time I was nine years old until I was 16, you could find me sitting with my family on the second pew on the right side at Mount Perrin Church of God in Atlanta. If we were in town and well, we were in that pew. And Pentecostal worship is wonderful in many ways, just an emotive experience, just very uplifting. And there would be times when we would be singing, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And I would just have felt it so much. But there was a lesson in that that no one ever taught me that I, I think I accidentally learned. And it's that, well, I feel God in a service like this where I'm really uplifted. And so when I'm not feeling uplifted like that, somehow God is not with me. And that really doesn't set one up well for times of pain and loss when you're just not going to feel that same emotional high. Now, I'm not saying any Pentecostal minister taught that or meant for me to get that message. It's just the message that I learned when I was growing up in the church. And in the years since, I have begun to unlearn that. 
Now, don't think that I ran away from a Pentecostal background. I didn't. I walked toward a faith that was right for me. But there's so much enriching I found in that time. And I have very fond and formative memories in the Church of God and in the Assemblies of God where I spent my freshman year of college at Southeastern College in Lakeland, Florida. It was all good, but it, it left me with some things to unlearn that I think I would might have picked up no matter what faith tradition I was raised in. But fortunately, by the time I experienced some real hurts, uh, when my brother Michael, over a course of 11 months, died of AIDS, when my brother-in-law Ben was found drowned in the Gulf of Mexico, when my father was felled by a heart attack at work, I already knew that God's presence was much more dependable than my feelings. So now when I sing, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place, it's with a different sort of understanding that even if I don't feel it, the presence of God is with me. So when I look back on that and how it's changed me, I see this ascension season. You see, from this past Thursday, the Feast of the Ascension, until Pentecost Sunday, we enter the shortest and I think most neglected season of the church year, 10 days of ascension tide in which Jesus has already left and the Holy Spirit has not yet come. And the disciples are really unclear about how long it's going to be. We can see this because they settle in to uh, pick a replacement for Judas and draw lots and get Matthias who becomes one of the 12. They're trying to move on with their lives. They're gathering for worship all the time, continually giving themselves to praying in the upper room where they had celebrated the Last Supper with Jesus, but they're also waiting and watching and anticipating. And I think there's a lot for us in that season of ascension tide, the season of uncertainty. And as I was praying through this, I was reminded of a passage by the French philosopher and Jesuit priest, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. He wrote about the slow work of God. He put it this way, trust in the slow work of God. We are quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay. We should like to skip the intermediate stages. We are impatient of being on the way to something unknown, something new. And yet it is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stages of instability and that it may take a very long time. Give our Lord the benefit of believing that his hand is leading you and accept the anxiety of feeling yourself in suspense and incomplete. In our collect for today, we pray, do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before. The collect is borrowing language from John 14, 18. On the night before he died, Jesus told his disciples this in that passage, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And that is the certainty on which his disciples waited in that intermediate stage. And, you know, I, I've got to say, I, I have found my definitions changing during this time. Even that, you know, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I have found place to be virtual places like this one. We're gathered for worship in this morning. I have heard in our Diocese of Georgia worship and the congregations of the diocese, I've joined in virtual worship, some challenging sermons, some inspiring music, and I've delighted in the comments uh, as people write while they're watching. And we gather in this new way, in this time between the times. And I, I think that we have to not move so readily into what comes next that we don't sit knowing that God is with us in uncertainty and anxiety, and that can be a productive time as we trust in the slow work of God. And, I, you know, I can be impatient as anyone else to get on to the next step, yet I'm leaning into ascension tide this year is the time between the times, a time when we let go of our certainties, knowing that God is still with us, that the ready answers we thought we have may fall short, but that does not mean that God has left us or forsaken us. And if we can grab hold of this time and know that even when it seems that God is not there, we can trust that God is working slowly, something within us that is more than we could ask for or imagine. 
in this ascension tide, a time for remembering that even in the darkness, God is present, a time for not jumping to answers, but sitting with questions. And as we sit in this time, I pray that God will be present to you in this worship and in other times, because whether we feel it or not, whether we think God is absent, the presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen. One, two, three. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His Let us reaffirm our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, and for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit and became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found in your bulletin. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our own bishop, for Frank, our bishop-elect, and for all other ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find God and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the good earth which God has given us. Pray that we may have the wisdom and will to conserve it. 
I ask your prayer for peace, for goodwill among nations, for the well-being of all people, for all those in authority, especially Donald and Brian, and for those serving in the military. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the hungry, the oppressed, those in prison, those who mourn, and the sick, especially all affected by the coronavirus. Pray for those in any need or trouble. We pray for all who are in fear for their job, their safety, and their loved ones. Pray for all who are anxious or afraid. I ask your prayers for physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, for all scientists, researchers, and technicians searching for the way of healing. Pray that they may have wisdom and skill, sympathy, and patience. I ask your prayers for expectant mothers. Pray that God may preserve and provide for them. I ask your thanksgiving for the gifts of this Diocese of Georgia community. Pray that we may have an awareness of God's mercies. I ask your prayer for the dying and the dead, especially those who have died from the coronavirus and those for whom today will be their last day on earth. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially the ever blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Joseph and blessed Anna Alexander. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh. Uh -huh.